Hey guys, what's up? Darcy here at Six Strings Nine Lives. Back for episode five of Six with Six Strings. Uh, just six albums out of the collection that I'd like to show you, talk about, and get some of your opinions on some of these too. Um, you know, what sparks some of these ones that I pick? Well, I'll tell you, I uh, jumped in, in my truck the other day and um, my my phone will Bluetooth to my, my vehicle and uh, on comes, you know, random, random song comes on. Uh, Straight Through the Heart from Dio, and you know what, I've always loved that song, I've always loved that album, uh, and you know, that's one of the songs I absolutely love, the lyrics are just uh, amazing to that song, um, you know, Ronnie James Dio was such a great songwriter, um, lyrics were just, you know, amazing, um, you know, and if I was ha if I was doing some sort of Dio ranking, I'll give it away right now. Number one would be Holy Diver. Uh, absolute classic. Love this album. You know, straight through the heart, like I said, but there's not a weak track on this album. And the other thing that sparked this was um, they are finally going to release, um, you know, Ronnie's wife, and uh, which is his company's called Ninja Entertainment, I believe, are teaming up with BMG to release... Uh, Ronnie uh, sorry, Dio's last four albums, Killing the Dragon, Magica, uh, Master of the Moon, and Angry Machines, which at least three or four of those, three out of those four are re just ridiculously hard to get. I don't have them in my collection. I only have the first six Dio. Um, and you know what? They're almost going to, for me, I haven't really heard much of those four albums. So when I do get them, I am going to listen to them in order of their release and just appreciate them. Uh, you know, uh, Ronnie James Dio sadly missed. Um, anyways, this album, I, I couldn't speak highly enough about this. Um, and you know, like I said, straight through the heart, the lyrics, uh, Rainbow in the Dark, Holy Diver, Stand Up and Shout. You know, there's nothing weak on this album out of these nine tracks. And I'm sure all of you, there's a tidbit on here, I'm sure most Dio fans know what's going on with this logo. You know, there's the Dio logo, but you turn that upside down and it spells devil. So there's the D, E, the V, the I, and the L. I always thought that was pretty uh, pretty tricky, pretty cool. Um, anyways, that is the first one I'm going to show you today. Um, there is three connected here, and they're actually connected to this shirt, which this shirt is now what? 12 years old, 2007, went to this concert, and I'm going to show you some albums here shortly. Next up today for episode five is really my introduction to this band and the start of three, uh, a string of three albums I absolutely love. I don't own this on CD yet. I don't know why. I need to get on it, but this is Suicidal Tendencies. Uh, how will I laugh tomorrow when I can't even smile today? Just love this album. And like I said, this is a string of three albums that I just I just adore. Lights, Camera, Revolution, The Art of Rebellion. Oh, classic suicidal tendencies. So this one is from, what year was that one from? That's from 88. You know what? 88, what a year. I mean, uh, you know, those, uh, those people, uh, you guys that are around my age, I mean, 88, come on. It was awesome. Uh, next up, I'm going to show you the, uh, in these episodes, uh, if you've watched any of them, I do continue one uh, group on to the next episode. Um, last episode, I showed you an album from Anvil, Metal on Metal, which is an absolute classic. So I picked one kind of in the mid to uh, newest of their discography. This one is from 2011. This is Anvil's 14th studio album, and I... This is an underrated album. If you have any hesitation of picking up some of the newer Anvil, uh, don't fear, because this one is a great album. Juggernaut of Justice. Uh, great sound on here, very well produced. Uh, there is the track listing. There's even a track listing, on, or a track. This one's, uh, it's spelt uh, fucking A. Um, it's spelt no, it's it's kind of a Canadian thing for sure. A, um, you know, that is definitely a Canadian term that you'll hear um, maybe from me too, whatever. Doesn't matter. But definitely check out 
Juggernaut of Justice tracks like uh, the leadoff track, When All Hell Breaks Loose, um, On Fire, uh, Not Afraid, just solid album from Anvil from 2011, their 14th studio album. And the last three we'll talk about today, this is uh, uh, all about this concert that I saw uh, March 16th, 2007. Um, you know, when I heard uh, a version of Black Sabbath was coming, which uh, at the time uh, they went under the name Heaven and Hell, which is the uh, name of the first album that Ronnie James Dio appeared on. So, yeah, and after, uh, you know, I was listening to Holy Diver, as I told you earlier in the video, you know, I got thinking, you know, what a great album Heaven and Hell is. Um, and, and then it got me thinking about that concert I got to see, which were, um, you know, fantastic show. Uh, minus the opening band that didn't show up, couldn't come, but that band was down. Uh, basically, I don't know what happened that that show. Uh, something was wrong with Phil. You know, who knows? Uh, and I think it was drug related, whatever. Um you know, uh, if any band wasn't going to show up that day, you know, I'm glad it was down. But even though I'm a, I'm a huge Pepper Keenan fan, I, I am, uh, I have a lot of respect for Pepper Keenan, um, uh, COC, love it. You know, and I always think back of uh, when uh, Pepper Keenan tried out for the bass uh, spot in Metallica, and I was always wishing that would have been the guy. No disrespect to Rob, because he's fantastic and. Uh, you know what I, but I love Jason too. But anyways, I was always hoping, you know, man, Pepper would really fit in here. He's, um, you know, um, he would just be a perfect, uh, like I said, perfect fit. I know he's a guitar player, but, uh, you know, he did try out for the bass spot for Metallica. Didn't get the job, as you know. But anyways, uh, so opening band that day, kind of a no-show, but a good album. Uh, this is actually the only down album that I own. Um, you know, uh, I think their second album, I might have had it on cassette. I cannot remember. No, cause I don't know. Anyways, let me know what you think about Down. Uh, tracks on here that I, awesome. Uh, Pillars of Eternity, um, Eyes of the South. Uh, my favorite track on here is Stone the Crow. Uh, real Southern crunchy feel on this album. And that's Down, uh, Nola. So that was the opening act. Like I, like I told you, you already know they didn't show. And that leads me into the next album, which is, uh, who, who else opened was Megadeth on this album, actually. And this is 2007's um, United Abominations. Um, and um, great album. And kind of uh, what inspired me talking about these albums, too, is I'm thinking, you know, you always see... Peace Cells, Rust in Peace, you know, all the phenomenal albums, and I love them, but I do love this album too. And I was just thinking, you know, when we are loving albums that we do, you know, is it a lot of it timing? Did we, do we associate our favorite albums with when we first um, heard them? Of course we do, you know, but I'm going to tell you, an album like this, which is fantastic, you know, let's say this came out after so far so good so what in between rust and peace or you know wherever but earlier you know you might have a, a whole different point of view about some of these albums um you know but if they're a band you love i'm just gonna say don't don't give up on on some of the the uh their li people's later albums yes uh, there's bands that don't have uh or they have a dud in the mix whatever um but you know if you I know you're uh, emotionally attached to some of these albums. So anyways, uh, kind of if you get where I'm going with that. Um, anyways, great album. And they put on a heck of a show there in uh, uh, 2007. Got to see them um, a few times in, in my lifetime. Always a great show. Anyways, and we're going to wrap this up with a fantastic album that, uh, you know, you know, the whole Dio thing really inspired this episode. I, you know, you know, I, I, fortunately, I am so happy that I did get to see them live. Um, you know, uh, Ronnie is not a, a large man, but man, is he just big. Uh, stage presence, voice, the whole deal, commands the stage. 
Um, anyways, if you have never heard this album, Heaven and Hell, um, do yourself a favor, go get it. Uh, for all intents and pur purposes, uh, this is a Black Sabbath album, which, uh, you know, it has uh, Tony, Geezer, uh, Vinnie Apice on drums, and Ronnie on vocals. Um, the show that I saw, they only played uh, songs from Heaven and Hell, Mob Rules, Dehumanizer, and um, that was it, because this album actually came out in 2009, which was, you know, two years after I saw them. And then, um, yeah. Anyways, great album, Heaven and Hell. Uh, some of my favorite tracks, uh, Adam and Evil, Bible Black. Absolutely love that song. Uh, Rock and Roll Angel, uh, Double the Pain. Uh, there's just really not much weak on this album. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Six with Six Strings. Um, you know, give uh, let me know some of your thoughts about these uh, albums. Um, are you going to pick up some of the new Dio reissues or, do you, you know, do you have them? I don't know those albums well, but I am really glad I don't uh, because I am looking uh, really forward to just absorbing them as they as they were almost new. And they're new to me for sure. Um, yeah, so that's it. And until next time, stay heavy.